Hello everyone, this is D22 with you today from D22 Responses, and today is another tutorial. This is PowerDirector 10 from the makers of Cyberlink. So, we are going to get started with this new interface. Now, this is the interface that brings you up to the beginning screen. So, it tells you to select the project aspect ratio, which is 69 or 43. 43 is standard, 16.9 is more high definition, and it gives you editing modes. So, you can go full feature editor, easy editor, or slideshow, slideshow creator. And you can also feature this sort of thing as startup. So one of the things that we're going to do, well, let's just pick with the full feature editor and then it's going to start Cyberlink Power Director 10. Now this is the newest version. Now I don't use this anymore. So this is basically an evaluation version. So we're just going to go try now because I'm not too fond of Cyberlink, but this is just a tutorial request that one of my subscribers requested. So we're going to do this right now and we're going to do this quickly. I'm not going to make this long and boring because it's around 10 o'clock where I am right now and I just want to get this over with. So we're just going to go and get started with it. So this is going to be as new as anything that I'm going to do. So this is more like a tutorial for me. So what it's doing, the interface is very similar to the previous ones. So what we have here is your options and you can also create 3D movies as well. So you can select like a MPO file and then here let me just introduce you to some of the features. Here is the effects room, the picture in picture room, the particle room, title room, transition room, audio mixing room, voiceover room, chapter room, subtitle room. Now, we're going to go through these one by one. So the effects room will basically have your effects. And the good thing about it is that it'll preview it on this side here. So let's go with the new drawn in effect, the new hand effect, the ghost effect, dual chrome, and all your others. So those are basically your effects there, the metallic effect. And then they also have several particle effects. Now, I'm usually not too fond of these sorts of effects because this is just something that I used to use before. I mean, let me just tell you something. This is the software that I started using when I first started on YouTube. So yeah, I, I was just going with the limited budget. So what we're going to do, basically these are all your effects. So how to mainly navigate yourself. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Color edge, effects here. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty standard. And it, that's all I can say about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to put in our videos. So what you do is you go to media room and then what you do is you click the folder that says import media files and then what you do is it will allow you to go through and pick every single format and then what we're doing I'm just gonna go pick a sample video so we're just gonna go and put in a video what we'll do, we'll just select one that I did previously. And then when it asks you to import a high definition video, it gives you a prompt. So you usually click yes, or you can just uncheck that and then it'll not prompt you anymore. So you click yes for this because to be honest, I don't like this software, but I'm just going to give you a tutorial on it anyway. So I'm just going to put in my file. As you can see, the file is in the timeline. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to where it says timeline view and then you can also view it in the storyboard view so the storyboard gives you an idea of how each of the clips will go through but we're just going to use the timeline for now so what we'll do is we're going to zoom in so you click on the bottom here to zoom in to get a more detailed frame by frame effect and you can also split the scene here I believe you can just do a drag and select your clip and then you can also move this thing back and forth so that you can look at video tracks and audio tracks. This video doesn't have any audio, but this is one example of how you can put it in. Now, this is only for just people that cannot afford basic software. I mean, this software is pretty expensive itself. I mean, I have Sony Vegas Pro, which is a heck of a lot better than this, but most of the people use this. So here's how you do it. Your video is in the timeline and let's say you want to add an effect so you basically go in to where it says effect room and then you can apply your effect you can apply your effect right here you can go into the menu and then 
your effect will go in there like your the fire effect will be in there so what you can do as well is you can move back and forth and then you can just do your own edits of certain effects like you can switch the frame around you can crop it to however you want and you can also set it for standard 2D or 3D view you can get basically the video ready for 3D that's one of the new things in Cyberlink Power Director where you can do what's called stereoscopic 3D and that's pretty cool when you want to make your videos 3D so what we'll do is we're just gonna go standard 2D view and then it's right back so what we'll do is we'll stretch the timeline out again and then what we'll do there will be like this thing called a magic fix where this is like the one click fix thing so you can just click on that and then it'll adjust it for lighting it'll do a stabilizer and then you can do what's called a video denoise and then what you can do is you can just apply to all and then it'll apply it to the video right here because you see it's a little bit more clear and more enhanced and that's pretty cool about that so what we'll do next is we are going to go to where it says magic style and we will just apply that so what we'll do we'll go to fast motion and then we'll apply it so you can apply a lot of effects but the thing I don't like about the software is that it doesn't give you the option to cut in between frames that's one of the things I don't like about it but that's just me so it's pretty straightforward this interface your media interface where all your movies and pictures go and also an NPO or MPO file type your effects and then you can also put in clip arts, custom clip arts also you can do various effects here like maple leaves, that's pretty cool or you can do 3D effects where it's all 3D and then text effects like you can do custom titling like that and also transitions which 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 are pretty cool I mean don't get me wrong and also you can put in your music that's where most of the audio goes and then you can record your own voice now usually this this is picking up my microphone so usually when you press record then you can do like a narration over something like you can do a screen capture of something here now to capture something usually what you would do is you would click capture and then what you can do is you can it can detect devices like for example it'll detect my webcam and it'll also detect any sort of audio device like what's happening right here is that it's showing my face as I'm talking to you right now which is pretty nice and you can just record whatever you want to do on here so this is just an example of what the capture software is able to do so we're just gonna exit out of that and then we're gonna go back to edit and there you go mainly and for this other option the one two three chapter format it'll separate it into chapters so it's pretty straightforward there and then after that this custom option called the subtitle room you can basically add subtitles like if you want to make a Japanese video or something and then you want to add subtitles like for example let's say we're going to go to this point and then we put the subtitle in let's just say the subtitle will be let's just go you click on the plus sign to add a subtitle at the current position and the cool thing about it is that you can add a subtitle like Foshura and then basically it'll show your subtitle in there which is pretty cool like if you want to add subtitles to certain sections it's pretty nice and then it'll also transition into something else so it's a pretty straightforward editor but if you want something more intricate and more advanced you can go to Sony Vegas so let's just for example we're to, we'll just pretend we're done here so what we'll do we'll just pause that thank you go back what we'll do is we want to produce it so basically capture you capture your video okay let's not start that again here's what you can do you can either capture it from your HDV camcorder your DV camcorder a TV signal digital TV signal webcam microphone CD and either an external or optical device you capture that you can edit it here and then you can produce it so the produce section usually allows you to produce your video 
in any of these formats. So you can basically select AVI, uh, excuse me, AVI, WMV, MPEG-1, MPEG-4, MPEG-2, MOV, H.264. This is the high quality codecs and also audio file, so MP3. You have to make sure that your profile type is either Windows or DV AVI and also the NS, NTSC format selected. Then you can choose whatever you want and then you click start which will basically render it out. But the thing is though, it'll have this sort of trial thumbnail if you have a trial thing. So if you have a trial version of it, this is what it'll output to. And then you can also do direct uploads to Facebook, YouTube, Dailymotion, Vimeo. And you can also select the profile type of that which is basically full 1080p. You can enter the title and the description and then it'll just do a straight upload to YouTube which is pretty nice. And you can also select the file format that you can put on your iPod, your PlayStation or PSP, and your Xbox 360, and also a camcorder file. Like it's this is right back to tape, and you can also do it for an MPEG-4. This is like for a cell phone, and then you can also set for 3D formats as well. So this is how you can set it into full 3D. You can select the file format, the 3D output, the profile type. It'll have the properties here, and then you can choose whatever you want here. So honestly, this wasn't much of a tutorial, I know. There's just still some things that are really hard to get through, but it's pretty cut and dry. You have your effects tabs here and your timeline, and you can choose between the storyboard menu and the timeline, and the rest is just up to you, basically. You just have to familiarize yourself with all of the panels and just use your imagination. So that'll be it. Thank you so much for watching. Get Field for Life, and I'll respond to you another time. Goodbye.